Hi, I'm John, and here's what I'm doing today. Carpentry. So I'm gonna turn this into that. These are two separate windows, so that isn't fancy camera work, but that's the plan. I already did this one, but I'm gonna do this one. So I replaced these windows, and uh, there are no jams on them. So I need to build that out, and I need to trim them out. Now, I did this intentionally. If you notice, we've got drywall and then a layer of plaster. This plaster that was put on is not even at all. So I'm probably gonna have a different thickness from here to up there and whatnot. So that's why I did not get them manufactured with the jam extensions. So we're gonna make jams. So if you're new to this, this part is the jam, that part is the trim. Um, this one still needs a final coat of paint. You can see I need to sand where I filled in the nail holes and do a little painting, but we will show you the whole shebang. Now, a couple of things. This window is actually slightly smaller than the old one. You can see this framing, this is a one by four that I put in here as a spacer as well as down here. I ordered the windows the wrong size. What I thought was the framing was actually part of the old window. Not a big deal, slightly smaller, but that means when I put my trim on, it's not going to go past this. So what I'm doing is putting larger trim on, so it'll go past this. You can see nice, thick, beefy trim. The old trim was like that. Now, and then I'll also cover things like that because I am picture framing it. Sometimes you'll see they'll do it where there's like a stool that sticks out. This one is just 45 degree miters all around. So it's like a picture frame. Whereas this one, you can see there was a stool that stuck out. I think it's a stool or is it the sill? I don't know. So anyways, um, you're gonna wanna paint this beforehand because the trim has been here for 65 years and the paint has been here over and over and over again over that time, there's a little ridge here. You can kind of see it there. So you're gonna wanna sand that down so it's smooth, possibly match wall texture. Can't tell if this was painted once before, if that's the original color or if that's just the plaster. It might just be the plaster. So you might need to transition that texture over here. Uh, it looks like it has the texture, maybe. It's tough to tell. Um, sand that down and then paint this as well as anything um, like this hole here, you probably need to fill that in, um, stuff like that, before you do any of the trim. That way, you don't need to worry about taping anything off, you paint it beforehand. Now in this case, I'm not gonna be able to match that color. This is old paint, I would have to paint the whole room to get it perfect. Unfortunately, things like this will still be there, I'm not too worried about that. This is gonna be completely covered up because, again, I got the beefier trim. I did not paint anything here. The trim line was like here before. So that is what I'm going to do. Beefier, thicker trim, so something to consider. Also, you know, little things like that you'd have to address. I don't need to do any of that. So first thing I'm gonna do, I need to clear some space here, move this stuff out of the way so I can get to the window more easily. I moved the cabinet out of the way and look at all this stuff from when I took out the old window. Now, you can see I ran a bit of caulk down here since Normally when you install windows, you'd put shims under here and then you can tuck some insulation under there. I didn't do that. So I just ran a bead of caulk here. It is tight to the framing, ran the caulk underneath. Make sure to do that. I also put this in. These windows have been in, this is like a spare room that I don't really use for anything other than tool storage. Tools that I don't even use anymore. Um, I'm gonna have to sell those. Uh, but anyways, I did this last winter. It is now spring, so I made sure to insulate beforehand, but what I'm gonna need to do is cut these bits of cheese that's sticking out. Some of it I can just pull off. Some of it I need to cut. All of this is coming off, and then I'm going to grab my tin snips and cut these nails off. I didn't have a good grip on it. Um, we'll cut those off. Another one up here, and another one over here. All right, those are cut off. And then it looks like I've got one massive trim nail. Like look at the size of the nails they used for the trim before. I'm gonna have to pull that out and I don't have my hammer in here, so I have to go get it. I can also just pound it in all the way too. That would work as well. I might do that. There, now it's out of the way. 
Now it's time to measure the window. Now this is important, measure the window, not the framing. So from right here to right here, not from here to here. That's very important. It's gonna go in front of the window here. And then same with the, the vertical. You also want to measure the distance from the window to the outside of the drywall. That's another important measurement. Um, in my case, I wrote them all down. It is 36 and a half by 38 and an eighth because I don't know the decimal for an eighth. And it is three and one quarter inches all around. This one is actually surprisingly even. Plus or minus a sixteenth. I can always caulk that along the window. So to get that, you can see I'm not dealing with perfectly even areas. How did I measure that? I just took a straight edge. Hold on. I just took a straight edge, went across like this. So it's perfectly at the drywall and then measured from the window to that. Make sure you do all four corners and you just write the measurement on each corner. In my case, again, they were all the same. So it works out nicely. And that's how it should be. But as we know, not all houses are perfectly straight. So now we're gonna go break down some material. So the material is right here. I get two pieces here for the jams and then two pieces for the trim. Now I painted it. This is a big tip, paint it before you put it on. Then you don't need to tape off the wall or the window when you're painting. It's all painted beforehand. I'm gonna have very little scraps here so it's not really a waste of paint or anything. Paint it beforehand, much easier and quicker that way. I'm good, just gonna have to do a light little touch up over the nail holes once they're in. This is baseboard material. It is half inch by three and a quarter inch by, it's not quite eight feet. I don't know what it is. I got lucky, three and a quarter inch is exactly what I need. If you had to cut it down, which I'm probably going to in other windows, make sure you cut all of them on the inside, meaning the cut part will be touching the window and not facing out, much less prep work. And it matters because the back is unfinished. So anyways, we got that and then this, I think I took the, oh, no, there's the stickers. It's way over my head so I can't see it, but that might tell you what the material is. I got it at Menards. So let's grab one of these out and start cutting. So I'm using a miter saw to make these cuts. And personally, I think that's the only way that you can be sure you're 100% square. You can get close if you use a speed square and a circular saw. And I suppose if you've got a cross cut sled for your table saw, sure. This is the easiest way. So we're gonna cut it on here. First thing I'm gonna do is cut off the end. Look at this. Let me come to the edge here. See how that's not square? These aren't always square. So I'm gonna make a perfectly square cut on the end before we get started because if it's not square, you're gonna have problems. Safety first, he says as he puts his head under the blade of a saw. Now I got my measurements here. Make sure you know which one is the height and width because it's important. The width, we're gonna cut it at exactly the right width, 36 and a half. I'm gonna cut two of these. The height, I'm gonna cut minus an inch. Why am I cutting it minus an inch? Because this material is half an inch thick. You wanna cut the verticals. Are they still styles and rails? I don't know. Cut your vertical pieces to be double the thickness of this or less. So in this case, half inch, half inch is an inch. This is gonna be an inch less because it's going to be sitting on top of it between two of these as important. Also, use the same tape measure. It's a great idea to have one tape measure here and one inside so you can use two different ones. They're not always gonna be perfectly identical. This is a bit of a precision job when you're doing carpentry. So you can make sure you're using the same one and it's gonna have the same measurement. All right, we're gonna cut. pieces cut. Uh, a couple of tips I already mentioned, chop off the end so you know it's square. Make sure you're cutting from the right squared part when you cut your second piece too. Otherwise, square off the other end and do that. This is all I've got for scraps. 
Unfortunately, I don't have any windows these will fit in, so these will go into the burn bin. Um, mark left, right, top, and bottom on them. In this case, they are very close to the same dimensions. We're 37 and an eighth, 36 and a half. So we are, what, five eighths difference between the sides and the top and bottom. Might be hard to tell the difference when I'm putting them together. This way I know. Now, I could just do sides, horizontal and vertical if I wanted to, but I'm showing this because if you had them cut with a taper, it's important to know which side is which. Um, also, make sure to note the thickness of your blade so you're not like an eighth of an inch. The blade's an eighth of an inch thick here. Don't want to be an eighth inch shorter on this one than that one because of the blade. So now we're ready to put it together, and I'm going to do this on a flat surface like the driveway. All right, we are all attached. I just put some 18 gauge nails. This is the best tool ever, 100 bucks, go buy one. Put some 18 gauge nails in, make sure you top and bottom go over the, the sides hence why they're marked um, you want your finished side the part that you're gonna see to be down might help to put it on some cardboard or something too so it's not getting all scraped up but that way you know it's perfectly flat you see that slight little variance just slight variances in the wood well actually that's not flat all right I'll just pop that out and fix it um, but you can see perfectly flat now what else Make sure when you're using your nail gun, your fingers aren't close either because sometimes those nails will swoop out and you don't want it to go into your fingers. In fact, on this one, I doubt you can see it on camera, but I don't remember which one it even was. I blew right through it. I think this is it. Look at that. I was too close to the edge. Blew right through it and hit my hand, but because my hand was far enough away, it didn't really hurt. It felt like getting shocked when you touch a doorknob. I'm going to pop this off and redo it. Got it fixed. Make sure to pick these up so you don't impale yourself. Now, we're going to dry fit it. We're not putting it in yet. We're just going to dry fit it and see how it looks. So, we're all in. This is a little bowed here. I'll be able to fix that when I do the, when I do the trim. You can see I messed that up with the um, mallet. I'm trying to break that, break, take that part off so I could re-nail it, but... We're going to touch up the paint anyways. You can see nice and flush. Um, there's a larger gap on this side as expected, but if you look in there, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but we're right with the side of the window. We're good to go. Now we're going to take this out and add the trim. And that's right, we are doing the trim before we put the whole thing in. Now another tip is to take a scrap of each and line them up on your on your wall like that just to see how well they fit if it's going to cover up everything here let me show you now you don't need to actually attach them that's why you be careful where your hands are you don't need to actually attach them um i just did it because i'm using one hand to show you so i'm going to take this and line it up with the edge of the window where it's going and you can see exactly how far that's going to go out and that tells me that we are going to cover that up entirely. We're going to cover up down here because it's just going to rest flat on there. We're going to cover all of this up, the damaged plaster, everything. This side, just line it up with the edge of the window. And oh, look at that. We're actually not entirely going to cover that because of this gap. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it. I'm not going to touch up the paint on that. One day this room will be painted and that's where things like this will be fixed. And that little bit there, you're not even going to notice in here. Also, this is a room that no one ever goes into. How about up here? We cover some of that even. So that's one way to do it, just to check to see how far your trim is going to go. Here's my living room. You can see I really had to build this one up. And even this one. It covers that, so I actually don't need to do any drywall work here if I use this trim. Um, it's gonna be pretty close. Part of the structure of this is nailing that in. 
So I'm probably still going to do the drywall work. I was also thinking about using the smaller trim. Uh, here's the other trim, for instance. Look at the difference in size here uh, between the two. What was, but this is what was basically on there before. This is what I will be buying for all these other windows because I actually have this paint. So I don't need to try and match it or anything because I painted this wall. Anyways, I went through all of that to explain to you that this, use this to see how far out it's gonna go. Now, I'm gonna start with these scraps from the other window, but I'll probably I'll end up using one of those full pieces in a minute. Anyways, we're gonna do some math here. Our height is 37 and 1 8, and we're gonna go with that because we need the inside dimensions. Our width, we wanna lose an inch off of that because again, inside dimensions of this, and if you wanna measure it, the inside dimension of this, look, half an inch there, half an inch there, so the inside will be one inch less. I'm gonna grab something bigger to write with. So our width, let's start with that. 36.5 minus one, because we're doing the inside dimensions, is 35.5 plus 0 0.25. We're gonna have a reveal. I already broke that piece apart. So when we put this on, we are gonna want, we don't wanna just go flush to the edge, we want a small reveal like that of about an eighth of an inch. It makes it look a lot better, and if things adjust as the house settles, it won't be as obvious. So, a quarter inch on both sides, or I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch on both sides comes out to a quarter of an inch. So it's 35.75. Now, we need to add double the thickness of the trim, or the width, not the thickness. This trim, I believe, is three and a quarter. It is, yes, three and a quarter. So we're gonna double that. So three and a quarter doubled is six and a half plus 6.5. And we'll add that up. Uh, 25, 35, uh, I hate doing math on the spot when you guys are watching. That should be 42 and a quarter. That is what we need. I'm gonna do the same thing with this, uh, but we're going off of this. We already subtracted that one. So 37, let's do this. Now the height is going to be 37 and 1 eighth minus, or plus a quarter of an inch, 0.25 is going to be 37 and 3 eighths plus, uh, what was it, six and a half. I'm, I'm gonna do just fractions. Six and one half is, uh, let's see, 30, that'll be seven eighths. If I did my math right in my head. 37 plus six is 43. So our height is going to be 43 and seven eighths. Our width is gonna be 42 and a quarter. And this is going to be from the outside. Now, why do we measure from the outside? It's simple because we can hook a tape measure on that outside. We cannot hook it on the inside, so it makes it easier to measure. I'm gonna quick show you on this window what all those measurements mean. So the inside dimensions is here to here. When we, met, when we cut this piece, we cut the outside dimensions, so we lose that half inch on either side to get your inside dimension. Then add an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch there, which is a combined quarter of an inch. Then, because we're measuring from the outside of it here, not the inside, we're measuring from the outside, you wanna add three and a quarter, which is this, and then three and a quarter. And that's how you get outside dimension to outside dimension. And then the same thing goes with the height. Hopefully that makes sense. I watched literally the only other video, or at least decent one, that shows this uh, DIY home renovation. Highly recommend him. I've mentioned him on many of my other videos before. And he went, walked everyone through this as well and how to measure this. And I had, I didn't get it. I had to really think about it and eventually figured it out, but that's, he's usually good at explaining stuff. I'm just not good at math. That's probably the issue. Um, but anyways, so that. Now we're gonna start cutting trim. I put this on 45 degree here. Is it on? Yeah, that's right on. 
First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the end off so the end is a 45 degree, but this is very important. See, there's a profile here. There's a fat side. Whoa, focus. There's a fat side and a skinny side. And there's gonna be a long side and a short side. And this is a scrap, ignore that. But you always wanna make sure, in my case, that you're consistent. The long side, so this is backwards because it's an off cut, the other side was right. You wanna make sure the long side is the fat side. Now, I don't know if this is a standard, but I'm doing the narrow side on the window, the thick side on the wall, and there'll be sweat somewhere on like some basketballs or something. Um, that's just how it was in the house. On the old windows, that's what I'm doing. You can do it however you want, and your windows may have a different profile. Just make sure you're consistent, preferably on your whole house, but at least on the whole window. If you're not consistent on the window, then it's not gonna line up right. So we're gonna cut a 45 here. No, we're gonna cut a 45 there. And then we're gonna measure it and cut another one on this side. is perfect you notice I made multiple cuts I subscribe to the measure twice cut twice method to get it absolutely perfect I cut it a little bit long then I measured it and cut it a little bit in and I keep doing that until it's the right length but now we are the proper length I need two of these and then I need two uh, this is 43 and 7 eighths so I need two more at 42 and a quarter So yeah, my piece is cut. I marked where they go, and I marked this one on the top. It's in pencil. We're gonna do a touch-up coat of paint. I can go right over that when, after covering the nails. This one was a little too short. So let me show you why it was a little too short. See the little hole in the tape measure? What happened when I measured it is the end went into it, which made it just a little off. I think that's what happened at least. Um, so I was a little off on that one. I can't stress this enough. Always buy one extra piece and paint that one extra piece. You can always use it on the next window or save it if you ever need to fix some trim. Because this, now this can probably be used on another window somewhere. Um, maybe. It might be too short for another window. But anyways, always have that extra piece just in case. Otherwise, I would have been stuck. I would have had to go back to the hardware store, buy another piece, paint it, and then tomorrow, when it's done painted, then I can finish this project. All right, so now we're gonna glue these together. That's right, I said glue them. I'm using just a standard wood glue. I don't know the difference between any of these. This is the wood glue that I bought. So this is the wood glue that I'm using. Um, what else? Clamps, you're gonna want four clamps. And nail gun, which is kind of optional, but for the sticker trim, I'm gonna use it. You're also gonna want a wet paper towel and a glue brush. I'm using this one. So we are going to angle these so you can see them right on top of this work piece. Again, make sure you have the right pieces going together. So I'm gonna take my glue, and I'm gonna apply a thin bead to one piece and then use my glue brush to brush it all in and then my wet paper towel to clean it off the brush. And then we are just going to attach them together. You wanna make sure that you are perfect here. And then I'm gonna use a clamp to hold them together. And a nail gun, stuff in the way. Uh, I'm gonna have to move you, you're in the way. 
nail gun. To hold it all. And I'm gonna do that four times. did not cooperate this and this are exactly why you don't want to have your fingers nearby so I'm gonna worry about this one later I'm gonna try and take this one out well no I'm gonna wait until later to try and take these out um, and then there's gonna be a little bit of wood filling because this is gonna be a little bit more damaged but not a big deal I'm noticing my corners didn't turn out that great so I'm just gonna fill it in with a little wood filler, but that tells me one of two things. Either my saw here, that is not a perfect 45, at least one of the cuts, maybe I wasn't right on the 45, or I was slightly too long or short. I'm inclined to say that I probably wasn't right on the 45, so definitely keep an eye on that. I'm going to quick check this. Um, I'm gonna do it later. Before I do my next window, all you do is you take a framing square, the reason I'm doing it later is because it's still inside, and make sure you're at a 45 degree angle. Uh, right now, it is locked down to 45, but it might not be perfect. So, we're gonna leave this dry. Follow the instructions on your glue. It says that a minimum of 30 minutes. Clamp it for 30 minutes. And then don't stress the joints for 24 hours. So, what I'm gonna do, we're not really gonna be stressing the joints ever, but what I am gonna do is leave these clamps on. I took that one off when I was inspecting this nail, and this is actually held pretty well. But part of the reason you have the clamp, you see how there's a little lippage there. The clamp will hold it so it's straight like that. Anyways, um, we're gonna leave this for half an hour. I'm gonna use that time to make myself some dinner, and then we'll get this finished up. We're almost done. Never mind, I'm doing this right now. So what I'm doing is taking this and just wiggling it back and forth and pushing it. You see the head's popping out a little bit. Then I'm gonna take a pair of pliers and just pull that out. Easy peasy. Sometimes these just like to do that. Now, can you imagine if you had your finger right there? It would've gone through. And worth note, you can see, I did put another nail in to hold it proper. And so we got this one out. Now that one, that's just gonna take a little bit of wood filler. That one I was able to actually grab. This one, not so much. So what I'm gonna try to do is pry it up a little bit so I can grab it and try and push it out of the wood. It came apart when I pulled it out, so I just re-glued it and redid it. You see there's some chip out and that gap is a little bit bigger. Let me just check these other gaps. They're fine. So again, a little bit of wood filler is gonna have to go in here, not a big deal. Um, this is the thing, you can fill a lot of this in, so it doesn't need to be perfectly perfect. All right, now we're gonna leave it for half an hour. So, I am not a carpenter, a professional carpenter, or a professional tradesman of any sort. I have a day job. I'm also not a professional YouTuber. I mean, all of these projects that you see me doing is on weekends or days after work. Today is one of those days. I sat down and let the glue dry, and I could not for the life of me get up. It is now 9.49 p.m. So I wanna get this finished up so I can go to bed. I'm exhausted. So, first thing we're gonna do is remove the clamps. That did not glue well at all, look at that. Okay, interesting. We'll see how the rest of these go. That one's a tight fit. That one is not. No big deal. If I had more time, I'd probably re-glue it. So now I'm gonna rotate this. I need two hands for this, so I'm not gonna do it. On, I'm not gonna set the tripod, but I'm gonna rotate this like that to get it even on there. Now I'm gonna set this guy to an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna line it up on the corners just like that. 
the corners only. Remember, there was a bit of a bow in this board, so the center we're going to have to readjust. So we're just starting with the corners. And I'm gonna get it all aligned nicely. So I've got aligned what I think is sufficient. I'm gonna put a nail in each of the corners. So that'll be eight nails and then one in each middle to hold it all in place. Because that isn't perfect, isn't held in, glued in well, look at this guy struggling to get back up. Um, I'm actually going to put four on each. So one in the corner, two in the middle, and then one in the next corner. One in the corner, two in the middle, one in the next corner, and so on. done building this you can see it's kind of like a picture frame now we're gonna go bring this in and install it when you carry this try to carry it by this part not the trim because it's not held on well and you see some of these nails went out the side um, so hopefully they don't get in the way I'm gonna make sure top and bottom is the same so I'm just gonna put it up like this but uh, I'm gonna probably reinforce that with some extra nails also worth note, when I was nailing that, I was pulling this part up to uh, line it up right to fix the bow. Now I lined it up just right, and I put one nail up there. That's what's holding it on. Now I can step back and look at it. You can see this gap. There's a little bit of a gap here but it's tied up here. Um, that'll all be fixed with caulking. Since the walls aren't perfectly straight, this is close enough. I'm not gonna try and do a taper for that 16th of an inch difference. Um, now we're going to put the nails in. This is very important. Put the nails in here first because it's just resting on the sill plate. And then we're gonna put the nails in the trim going around it next. And then, and only then, do we do the sides. Because if you do the side, remember there's nothing behind here. It might shift a little bit. So if it's held in there, then that won't be an issue. So I'm gonna do that. And then, like I said, along here, I'm gonna put in some extra nails just to make sure I'm going into the material here. Just like that, we are in. So I did four up each of these, one, two, three, four, on each of those pieces. Um, and then I did four on the bottom, but I just did two on these other ones. And this is in here really well. And then you can see I doubled up some of these. I basically went through and pushed on this to see if there's any movement. If there was, then I popped in another nail. So now this window, this is looking pretty good. So what's next, I'm not doing this tonight because I am exhausted, but I want to caulk this seam and fill in all of these nail holes. And the product that I am using is right here, this DAP plastic wood. I love this stuff, but you can use whatever you want. I'm using white. I'm also using white caulking. And then I'm just going to touch up the paint over those. If you look over here, you can see this is how they look when they're filled in. That is not one, that's one right there. I'm just gonna hit that with a sander. A little bit of glue squeeze out on these, I'll hit with a sander. Um, and then you can see I caulked this edge. There was, you can especially see it right here, there's a big gap right there. And I filled that in with caulking, nice and easy. Um, now when I paint it, I made sure my nails, let's come over here where you can see it better. I made sure my nails weren't close to the inside here, they were here. Because I'm not going to tape off this window. I'm going to paint everything but like the last half inch or so when I paint. That way, I don't need to worry about taping. Now, yes, I could get a brush and cut it in. I'm not going to go. That's why I painted it before I did this. Same with here. I'm going to just do this face. I'm not going to bother doing any of that. Now, you'll notice it covered up all of the paint line. And we even over here... I think right there, you can kind of see a little bit of where that stool stuck out. You're never gonna notice that. 
Of course, this from the mallet. Maybe I can scrub that off. This is from the mallet when I was, I was doing pounding on something over here with the rubber mallet. And that's how those got on. It's been like seven, eight months since I did the windows. Now the other thing to do is just check the window. Make sure it opens. And there goes the wood filler. Make sure it opens and closes smoothly. You should probably do that before you put this on. But that is how it looks all finished. I'll show you the before one more time. And the after. I forgot to film the before, so it's part of the video you already saw. Uh, paint that I'm using. Here's the paint that I'm using. I want to say I got this at the Home Depot, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, it paints really nice. I mean, you see how nice and smooth and shiny that is. Um, I'm happy with it, and I will probably buy more when I use this up because I've got a lot of doors and trim and everything to paint. So this one is going to look like that one when it's sanded and filled, and I don't have any example for when it's painted, but I'm going to paint it. I'm probably gonna wait to actually paint these until all the other windows, I've got like nine, eight, nine more windows to do in this house, which I'll be doing periodically after work. Every few days, I'll probably do one. Um, I'll paint them all at the same time. That way, I'm not, it's just easier that way. So I'll wait till they're all done to do that, but definitely an upgrade in the look. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to bed.